Alcohol in college students. It's kind of like toilets and sewer systems. If you have one, you'll have the other. Currently, the majority of students at the University of Michigan are under 21, which is the legal drinking age, and there is strong survey data that suggests a majority of these underage college students are drinking. On top of this, statistics show that over 40% of college students are not only drinking alcohol, but binge drinking. Given those facts, you have to start asking yourself, are we a nation of lawbreakers or is this just a bad law? Underage binge drinking is a huge issue plaguing college campuses all over the country. Formed in July 2008, the Amethyst Initiative aims to combat this problem. The group is made up of chancellors and presidents of universities and colleges all across the United States. These higher education leaders have signed their names to a public statement saying that the problem of irresponsible drinking by young people continues despite the minimum legal drinking age of 21, and there's a culture of dangerous binge drinking on many college campuses. While the Amethyst Initiative has been signed by 135 college presidents, the University of Michigan president, Mary Sue Coleman, is not one of them. Our goal is to show her that this is a problem worthy of her support. The Amethyst Initiative aims to make drinking legal at a younger age not so that the overall amount of drinking increases, but so that it can occur in situations that are not deliberately hidden from regulation. Because they will be disciplined if they are caught consuming alcohol, students drink heavily in private at the beginning of the evening rather than gradually in public throughout the evening. Drinking too quickly at the beginning of the evening can result in alcohol poisoning and cause the drinker to be unaware of how the alcohol is gradually infiltrating his or her system and impairing his or her judgment. If young adults were allowed to drink at bars and locations where their drinking would be better regulated, it would be an overall safer environment than house parties or locations where their drinking goes without monitoring. So what makes binge drinking so bad? First off, binge drinkers are 14 times more likely to report alcohol-impaired driving than non-binge drinkers. That means reducing binge drinking can reduce the amount of drunk driving that occurs. Secondly, binge drinking is associated with many health problems, including unintentional injuries such as car crashes, falls, burns, and drowning, intentional injuries, for example, firearm injuries, sexual assault, and domestic violence, alcohol poisoning, sexually transmitted diseases, and mental health problems. Studies show that 51% of people between the ages of 18 to 20 binge drink. This is the highest proportion of any age group in the exact age range that the Amethyst Initiative targets. In addition, 90% of the alcohol consumed by people in this age group is done through binge drinking. The Amethyst Initiative is the most effective way to reduce this number by promoting safe drinking methods and proper public regulation for those under 21. To get an idea of drinking habits around the University of Michigan, as well as their thoughts on the Amethyst Initiative, we talked to students comprising a typical composition of the larger university community. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I'd say at a house party, you're a lot more likely to drink a lot more uh, than if you're at the bar. If you're at a house party, if you're at somewhere where nothing's regulated at all, then there's nothing to stop you from, from just going crazy. Yes, definitely. You're a lot more likely to be more restricted in a bar where you have, you have to go home as opposed to like a house party where you're going to maybe stay there. I think to a certain extent, um, but mostly no, because people are going to do what they want regardless. In college, it's so easy to drink that, like, honestly, no one even thinks about the drinking age. No, not at all. Uh, I mean, even in high school, uh, if you wanted to, you could pretty much find somebody to uh, get you beer. I think given, given a few years, eliminating the restriction would definitely promote healthier drinking. Learning the drinking age would uh, ease kids into drinking. I think that you know, if there is a problem where someone drinks too much or something, they shouldn't be afraid to go to the authorities and you know, get the help that they need. I think it would just make campus a lot safer. Not Everyone wouldn't be just uh, trying to binge drink every chance they get and people would definitely be more responsible with their alcohol consumption. It's better that the law, like, that you sign the initiative just so, like, those students can seek, like, medical help without worrying about, like, 
what repercussions would happen. Regardless of the laws, people are going to do what they want to do. So, I mean, you might as well sign it so people can um, drink in a more safe setting. Mary Sue Coleman says that there is no data supporting the Amethyst Initiative. We need to convince her otherwise. Clearly, students will drink if they want to, regardless of legal restrictions. Restricting them from public venues only leads to less safe drinking environments, more reckless alcohol consumption, and an increase in fake identification usage. Our society has seen too many problems resulting from underage drinkers in unsafe environments and binge drinking. We need to encourage these inexperienced students to drink in more controlled venues. As the creator of the Amethyst Initiative, John McCardell said, when you have a law that says you may not consume alcohol until you turn 21, and when just about everyone affected by that law is violating it routinely, we have to ask ourselves, are we truly a nation of lawbreakers or is this just a bad law? We have the power to persuade our president that this initiative will make our campus safer and protect students from alcohol risks.